So you might recognize I'm out in Las Vegas. I'm here for the NAB show and Blackmagic Design have just announced DaVinci Resolve Public Beta 20. Now in there is amazing improvements to the Magic Mass tool. Now I use this on a big broadcast job on version 19 and we had a few issues with a certain bit of it. So I'm gonna bring that job into this episode and show you exactly how improved it is in version 20. So let's go and take a look. First of all, let me explain how the Magic Mask works for those who don't know. This is a shot on ARRI Log C4. I'm using a regular CST workflow to take us from ARRI up to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Here's where I'm gonna do my Magic Mask work. And this is DaVinci Wide Gamut back down to 709. And you can do this using the automatic color management as well. Let me click on this node here. Let me explain how the Magic Mask used to work. So at the moment we're in the new one. I'm just gonna switch up here and switch it to Legacy Object Mask. This takes us into the version 19 way of working in the Magic Mask. So traditionally what we had to do was to select either an object or a person. So if I select person here, let me put my mask on and we just select like this and this will give us our mask to work with. And this is in faster mode. If we switch it into better, you get a much more accurate result. Obviously it takes a little bit more time to process and we've got all these tools down here to really clean that up. So that's how it works traditionally. Let me just reset that. And what I'm gonna do now is show you what happens in version 20. So we click on here, take off legacy, and you see now that we don't have to select at all whether it's an object or a person. The AI is gonna work that out for us. So I'm gonna put my mask on, I'm gonna select our guy here. Now what we have now is not splines, we have these dots. So you basically just put a number of dots around and you can see that that looks absolutely fantastic and that's in faster mode. Let's put it into better mode and we're gonna get an even tighter mask. I'm gonna bring that up to full screen so you can see what's going on. And that is a massive improvement already. So all we have to do now, if I take that off, is we can then track that. So now that we've got our mask, if I deselect that, all we've got to do now is start grading. So if I go to my HDR tool, for example, we can bring down our exposure and that is changing our person there. Now, if I go back to the mask, what I can do is invert that and we can then start grading the background. So really useful tool. So I'm sure you all appreciate just how hard work this is. I've had to come to a really sunny Las Vegas and hit NAB and get all the latest news for you. If you like this sort of content, hit the subscription button for me, hit the notification bell, and let's get on with this episode. Let me show you what's happened in a real job and show you just how much this has been improved. So when you go to my next shot, this is the original grade from this is a channel 5 and netflix production this is a job that i actually worked on and we used the magic mask in order to drop the background down you can see that so we've basically masked her out and then i've used the exposure tool to drop the background down to make it make her pop a little bit better that's already been done this is in the version 19 legacy mode so you see here we've selected our person and all the work's done this is from the actual job so you're seeing what it actually was and it did a fantastic job but look what happens when we move a bit further down and her hand raises up. And what we've had then, if I just go full screen, you can see here that we have this kind of ghosting of the mask around here. And I worked for a long time to try and get this mask even tighter on that. And we could not get rid of this here. So this shot actually had to go to a VFX department and get repaired hand by frame by frame. And because we just couldn't get it right enough with the magic mask. It looked fantastic on all the shots, but this one particular shot just didn't work well enough for the show. So let's come back out and I'll show you now how it looks in version 20. So what I'm gonna do is a new version of this, Command and Y, that'll give us a new version. And what I'm gonna do is reset this mask. And I'm gonna switch it now. Oh, because I've reset it, it takes it off the legacy version. So that was the version 19 and 18 version. Now we're in AI Magic Mask 2. So we're now in the brand new public beta version 20 version of it. And you'll see straight away, there's no person or object as I've just shown you. Let's put the mask on. Okay, and again, we're just gonna select her now with these dots. And that selected her really well straight away. All right, so we're in faster mode. Now, if we look here, let's just go full screen, you can see that we're still not absolutely 100% right. And there's still a little bit of work to do here, but watch what happens when I switch it into better mode we get an absolutely perfect result. That is great. Now there's a little bit going on here, so we can use another tool to help that out. I'm just gonna come out of here. I'm gonna take off the mask so you can see what's going on. There's our background. And all we've got to do now is track this and that will track that mask in. So let me do that for you. Now, obviously this takes a bit of time. This is one of the more intense processing things on DaVinci Resolve. I'm running on an M4 Max MacBook Pro here. 
and you see the sort of speeds we're getting. It's gonna take about two minutes. So let's have a look what it's done. It's all really clean up to here, and it was in version 19, to be honest, but let's have a look at the bit where it failed, and it's there, and put that into full screen, and that looks absolutely perfect. I'm really, really happy with that. That would not have to go to VFX now. So it's already done a brilliant job of getting that right using the new AI Magic Mask. You see here it actually says Magic Mask 2, so you can tell which mode you're in very quickly. But if I wanted to treat any particular frames, you can go frame by frame, and using these brushes, you can actually add or remove bits of the mask. So let me show you how that works. So if I go to this mode, we can see a larger screen here, and we've still got access to our tool. So that's using Option F. And we can select a brush, so either add or subtract, and we can select a brush size here. So you see that on the screen. So let's make it nice and fine. Let's zoom right into here and just see if we can do anything particular. So this is using a negative brush. I'm going a little bit heavy there, so I'm going to undo that. That doesn't look very good. I need a finer brush than that. Okay, and in fact, what I want to do is add mask, not subtract. And we can add in like that. It doesn't actually need it, but I'm just showing you how the tool works. So something like that. And this is on a frame by frame basis. So you don't need to re-keyframe this. You just go through your shot, find the frame that you might want to change. So let's just have a little look there. We can add a little bit more mask in there and you're done. You've still got all these refinement tools down here if you want to do some further adjustments. And to inverse the mask, you just click on here. If you need to show your mask, you're clicking on here. So let's compare this to the previous version in version 19. I'm gonna go into full screen mode here. And this is the version 20. In fact, let's zoom in to the area that was giving us an issue. And this is version 20 with the new AI Magic Mask. And this is the version 19. So I'm sure you'd agree with me, the new Magic Mask tool is absolutely fantastic. This is really gonna give me confidence moving forward to use these sort of AI tools. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.